Hello everybody, how are you doing? Uh, I am out in the shop just for a little bit today. I'll tell you what I'm gonna be doing in a minute, but I'm a little frustrated. Uh, we got up this morning, I got up this morning at 6.30. I came out and I did this. I took the tire off of my car and I ran it up to the tire place. There's a little nail in it, it looks like a finishing nail. And I got it up there at 7.30 when they opened. I was the second person through the door and the first guy was literally picking up a wheel that he dropped off late last night. So it was a, like a five minute wait. It is now 12.30. I just pulled into that place to see if my tire was ready. It's still setting in the exact same spot it was setting when I dropped it off this morning. <laughs> so I'm a little frustrated. Now you'll notice what I got here. I've got a block of wood under it. What happened is I've got, see that little red piece there? That's that special little piece that goes up under the lip of my car and you use the jack to lift it. Well, I have to use a block of wood because this dish is too deep and that would, it wouldn't even work. It would press against the bottom of the car and damage it. Well, I went up there and I came back and this thing was, had been up on the jack and it had slid a little bit and there was about that much of the wood showing. So I got a little nervous and I went and I got these blocks of wood and I lowered the car down onto the blocks of wood very gently readjusted that and jacked it back up and it's just barely above the wood and I left that under there. I'll, I'll take it up higher when I get the wheel but that way I thought if something happened and it did slip it's only going to fall maybe an inch or so and it shouldn't cause any real damage so I'm hoping that everything will be everything will be okay but uh, it's been this way now for about four and a half hours and nothing has happened so I'm just hoping they get my, my wheel finished today. They close at 3 30 and I've got somewhere to be. They're closed tomorrow and they're closed Monday and I've got somewhere to be next week. So I won't be able to pick my wheel up for two weeks. If they, I guess my wife could go pick it up, but it's just kind of a pain in the neck. I mean, I would have thought they'd have been able to handle that. I guess maybe they're short staffed today. Um, a couple of quick things and I'll show you what I'm going to work on real quick. We just got back from the flea market. Now I went to see the record seller and I spent a little bit of time. I probably looked through 15 16 boxes of records. He probably has a hundred boxes of records there. However, I guess because it's a, I thought a holiday weekend, it would have been a huge show. I guess because it was a holiday weekend, a lot of the vendors didn't bother opening their booths. They must have had other things to do this weekend. So I didn't get to spend the amount of time I would have liked to because there wasn't enough show to keep my family busy while I was shopping records. So I exchanged a list with the guy of some songs or some groups that I'm looking for and he's gonna go back check his collection and uh, I'm gonna go back the first of next month and see if maybe he has anything that I'm looking for but I did get a couple of cool things I got Blackfoot Strikes this is a great album this is the album that has Train on it uh, Train Train this is this is just man this is just all out good hard almost a southern rock I really like that album and I'm excited about listening to it another album I picked up and I picked this one up more out of curiosity than anything, this band is is famous for uh, really backing David Bowie and really giving David Bowie kind of a, a, a boost. Um, I think I think they really kind of kickstart. He had a career, but I think they really kind of kickstarted his career. But the Spiders from Mars. Now this is post David Bowie. He is not with them. I've never that I, I, I that I that I realize. Now potentially I've heard something and don't, didn't realize it was them, but I don't think I've ever heard anything from the Spiders. But I thought I'd give them a try because they were kind of a kind of a funky sort of a rock band. So I'm hoping for some really cool tunes on that one. And then I picked this one up. Now this has always been a song that I've really really liked, and um, yeah, I never really thought about buying the album before. And I just happened to see it and thought, man, I gotta have that. But "Thick as a Brick" by Jethro Tull, and this is kind of cool. The album opens up, and it folds down, and it is literally like an. Uh, it's hard to do with with my hands. I don't want to let the album tip out of it but it's like a newspaper. There's like three or four pages in here with like little stories on them. <laughs> and I haven't read them yet, but it's kind of cool. I'll read through them when I get a chance to see what they're like. But I thought the album cover was really neat. But Thick as a Brick is, is just, a, in my mind, a really cool song. And I'm looking forward to listening to the entire album. Um, that's all I picked up today. I didn't have a lot of time to really do as much digging as I would have liked. I do have something else to show you. I stopped by the post office on the way home and uh, there was a box waiting for me and let me get it ready and I'll show you what it is. I got contacted by Dan over at Stainless Bottle Stoppers. Uh, their website is www.stainlessbottlestoppers.com and um, Dan was given my name by Jason Rose. They just introduced a new bottle stopper that lets you open a bottle but it doesn't put that dent, it doesn't dent or damage the top or the bottle cap. 
And Jason Rolls gave them my name because um, I've made some bottle stopper pins and I hope to make some more. <clears throat> so saving the bottle cap is, you know, is kind of really nice. I mean, that's a great start when you're making one of these pins. And they wanted to send me, or Dan wanted to send me some samples. So he sent me, and I don't know how well you can see these, but this is a standard bottle stopper. See how it's got a little lip there to grab it and open it? See how this one here, let me turn it around, has the long neck on it, and it's got a magnet, a magnet, magnet, a magnet in it to where you can pop the cap, and it, it looks like it stays on there. That's pretty cool. That's the one that uh, he really called me about. He also sent me a couple of their stainless bottle stoppers, so that's pretty cool. And this is something I've never turned. He sent me a honey dibber. That is really sweet. I'm going to turn that. Um, I got a couple of, these are the inserts. And basically, uh, this is what you'll put inside of your blank. And uh, this is your bushing down here. And this rubber, rubber, uh, or I'm sorry, not rubber. It's probably like um, HDPE or something. It's a washer that you basically put... Uh, I'll show you the mandrel in a minute, but th th this this is your this is your bushing, and this goes between the bushing and the bottle stopper so that you can unscrew it. Otherwise, they get on there so tight they're hard to unscrew, and you could damage them. And since we weren't sure if I had the right mandrel, he sent me a bottle stopper mandrel, so I can use this mandrel. These inserts that I showed you, the brass inserts, will work for the honey dipper, the bottle stoppers, or the wine the wine stoppers. I'm sorry, or the bottle cap bottle openers. Who got my words twisted up there? So I'm really excited about that. So I have got probably four or five projects out of this batch of stuff that, that I can do. So uh, I need to put a little thought into um, what I want to use in the way of, uh, of uh, blanks for that. And uh, boy, that sun is really, makes it look like I have no hair there, doesn't it? <laughs> I need to put a little thought into the type of blanks that I want to use. And um, we'll get together and we'll do, we'll do some turnings and let you guys see this. And I'll let you know what I think of, uh, of Dan's wares. And Dan, I just want to say thank you to you for uh, contacting me and for sending these to me. And I really do look forward to turning them. So you will see this, this stuff again uh, in the near future. Here's the real reason why I'm out in the shop today. This is the pin that I gave my son. It's a click pin. And the CA glue let loose and the... the uh, blank came off the tube and here's another one this is one that I made for my wife's girlfriend's son and um, the pin basically let loose so I'm going to go ahead today I've got my epoxy ready and we're going to mix up some epoxy we're going to kind of clean these off a little bit and we're going to put some epoxy on the tubes and we're going to get these glued back together and with the epoxy they will not come apart now truthfully the back end of, of this pin is nice and tight i would like to knock it loose and go ahead and uh, fix it as well but i don't take a chance of damaging it as long as it's holding so i'm just going to tell him to continue to use it and if it ever comes apart i will be glad to fix it and the same holds true for the back half of my son's pin there's nothing wrong with that so we're going to leave it alone for now and we'll just fix it uh, when when it actually gives way and notice on the back of his pin notice how this is not uh, super round can you see that it's got a little I'm gonna use some of my punches and I'll put one in there and I'll continue to add punches of larger size until I get to the exact size just to slowly spread that out and round it out uh, so that there's no issue otherwise when the ink goes in it kind of rubs and it, it, it just it doesn't allow it to click properly and it can also force the ink to one side which can cause it to bind so we'll get that cleaned up as well but that is really this is what I'm going to work on today and this is all I'm going to work on we have some other things we need to do uh, today as well so it's kind of a busy day today but uh, we're going to try to get these get these pins fixed Whew, it's hot out here guys I'm sweating like crazy I just turned on my fan and I'm standing in front of it just to try to cool off a little bit um, I've been working on fixing the pins and I have been recording it. Uh, I mentioned the other day I do have a video ready for uh, next Friday. It's already ready to go, ready to be released, Friday 7 a.m. Central. So I'll put this video together. Uh, it's just going to be a real short video and I'm not sure when I'll release it. I'll, I'll kind of pick a time and, and drop this video for you guys as well. Uh, I want to show you what I'm doing, but before I do, the other day you saw my video where I got the ketchup flavored and the dill pickle flavored uh, sodas uh, from Emmett Newsom, and I ran it by my kids and I said, hey guys, what do you think about doing a taste test? So they were all three really into it. So we'll see which of the three are available when, when I get back from everything I've got to do. I've got these next two weeks going to be crazy. When I'm finished with all of that, we're going to set up a taste test. I'm going to get some little cups. And uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna each pour ourselves just a little bit of each of these sodas. We're gonna taste them, and uh, we'll see the reaction on the kids' faces 
you know, what they, what they think. And uh, we'll ask them some questions about the soda and uh, get their opinion. So what I was wondering is if you guys, I, I, a lot of people said they were interested in seeing that. So what the heck? It sounds fun to me. I want to I taste the soda and the kids are curious about it. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Why don't you guys send me some questions? legitimate questions about what would you like to know about the soda? I mean, obviously, what does it taste like? Does it taste like a dill pickle? Yes or no, you know. Um, but send me a couple of questions and I'll try to put together five, six questions. So as each of the kids taste the soda, I'll get their reaction and then I'll ask them these questions and they can respond and we'll just have a real quick um, video on taste testing this soda and I'll taste test it myself and answer the questions as well but it'll be anywhere from two to three kids depending on who's available and I thought that'd be kind of fun but that's enough of that let me flip around and show you guys what I've been doing apologize for the noise but I gotta have that fan going it is hot out here I've got my son's pen and the nib actually pulled free so I went ahead and uh, epoxy the nib back in I just have the clamp there's no pressure on it just enough to hold it together so it doesn't slide out and I've got the uh, tube glued back into the blank. This pin here, I've got the tube glued into the blank and the little blue painter's tape is just to hold them together. Uh, it's five minute epoxy, so I'll give it about 20 minutes to dry. And then the back half of the pin, we're gonna have to get glued in. And this piece here I noticed was loose. Well, I can't pull it out with one hand, but uh, I can pull this trim ring out. So whenever these have set up for about 20 minutes, we'll go ahead and put epoxy on either side of that trim ring and we'll put this pin back together. And once again, I'll clamp it lightly just to hold it in place so it dries nicely. Um, then once the epoxy is fully cured, uh, we'll put these pins back together and they should have no more problem with epoxy on there with these pins coming apart. Uh, we'll also, I'm gonna run these across the buffer and buff them up real nice, give them a nice shine. I'll use some of that Renaissance wax on them and uh, just make them look uh, as nice as I possibly can. So that's it for me. I'm now in wait mode while that uh, glue sets up. And I may do a little digging around and see if I can find a blank that looks interesting for these uh, bottle openers, bottle stoppers, and uh, the, the, the honey dip, dipper. So that means I got to climb up in that loft. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty dang hot up there. I may pass on that for today. We'll see how it goes. I'm thinking one of these bottle stoppers, I had all those. This, this is what I'm thinking. I had all these chaos blank cutoffs. I'm thinking if we glue some of them together into a, a block about that wide, then we clean the top of it off where it's flat and glue some more on top of it. Maybe I can make a big chunky chaos blank and do a, uh, a chaos bottle stopper. Maybe that would look cool. And I got the wood, so I'm thinking maybe doing that. Uh, for the others, I don't know yet. I've got a lot of interesting wood up there. It's just a matter of uh, digging it out and uh, deciding which piece to use. I will keep you guys posted. All right, let me go get a nice cold drink, cool off a little bit, and by then these pins ought to be ready to go on to the next step. I took a little break and went up, finally picked up my tire, dropped it off at 7.30 this morning. They finished it at 2.30 this afternoon. It took a long time, and all they had to do, uh, I don't think you can see it because I think it's on the bottom of the tire, but they just put a plug in it. <laughs> they didn't even, yeah, it must be on the bottom. I can't see it. I thought they were going to have to take it off the rim and... Uh, you know, patch it from the inside and everything, but evidently it was just, a, like I said, it was a framing or a finishing nail. It was so small that they just did it from the outside. But I will tell you, the tire came back twice as dirty as it went. <laughs> it looks like they put it on a car and drove it through a, drove it through, you know, the worst possible conditions you can imagine because it is actually filthy now. And all they did was put a plug in it. Um, I kind of thought that might be the case with the plug and I almost went and bought a plug kit and did it myself. You know, but I really wasn't sure, so I, I took it up and had it done. So, But I'm back out in the shop. It's been about an hour now. My, uh, my epoxy should have had plenty of time to dry. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the other half of these pins, and then it's a matter of letting them dry, and they're ready to be used. I'll keep you guys posted. I went ahead and took the tape off of this pin. It has been setting for over an hour. Everything's dry, but I am not going to put it back together uh, until tomorrow. I disassembled, this pin is in a clamp and the clamp is just enough pressure to hold the pieces together so they don't slide apart. There's no excess pressure on there, it's not needed. Uh, the cap section of the pin, I went ahead and disassembled all of the click components. And the reason why is they were still in the pin when I put the epoxy in there and when I slid the center ring in, some epoxy got on the bottom of this piece and this is this piece, the plunger, is at the very, or the very bottom of the plunger is at the bottom of this piece and it had some epoxy on it as well. And my concern was uh, that that would 
well, not a concern. I know it will. It will fuse it together and the pin will be rendered useless. So I went ahead and pulled everything apart and cleaned the, the uh, epoxy off of these pieces. And they're just going to sit here overnight. Tomorrow morning when this pin is good and dry, I will reassemble the click mechanism, press it back into the pin, and this pin will be usable as well. Um, before I press these pins together, I am going to run them on the buffing wheel just to give them a nice little shine. And it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Well, I wasn't expecting to have any time in the shop today, but it's really, really funny how things work out. And I'm happy that I, I got a chance to work on those pins. You know, my son is really excited about having that click pin. Uh, he just liked it. He saw it and it just really spoke to him. And then my, my wife's uh, friend, her son, really loved, that's his favorite color, and he fell in love with that pin. And I hated it when I found, I didn't know it came apart. And my wife brought it to my attention last night. Her, I guess her girlfriend gave it to her, and then she, she uh, showed it to me. And I said, don't worry, I'll get it fixed. So... I'm happy that both of those are just about done. Um, I do have a little bit of time left in the shop. I'm not going to start a major project, but I think I may go look for some blanks uh, for these um, bottle openers, uh, bottle stoppers, and then for that honey dibber. I don't know what I've got up there, but we're going to go take a quick peek, and maybe we'll get lucky and find something. And if I do, I'll show you guys. Um, I like the idea of the chaos blank, so I think I'm going to, I am going to work on, not today, but I am going to work on building a nice big chunky block, you know, maybe uh, two inch by two inch by three inch or whatever, uh, so I can make, you know, make a nice handle for probably the bottle opener, because that one I'm going to keep for myself, and I think it would be cool to have a chaos blank on that. So let's see what we can find up in the loft. As long as I'm going up here, I may as well take you guys with me, and you can see what a mess it is up here. This, this, is, this is the wood that is stacked everywhere up here. Look at this. Blanks upon blanks upon blanks. I'm so close you can't even really get a good look. But you see this from down below all the time, and you never really realize all of the uh, material that is up here. It is just stacked and stacked with material. There's even material over on this side. Material up there. I got a shelf back there full of material. But what we've got to do is we've got to find some blanks up here that we think will make nice handles uh, for for the bottle stoppers and the uh, honey dibber as well as the um, the uh, bottle opener. So I'm gonna do a little digging and I'll show you guys what I come up with. All right, everybody, this is the part where you get to participate in what is the video going to be, all right? I have two bottle openers. Now the one on the left, I am going to glue up a Chaos Blank handle and I'm gonna make that one for me, that's a keeper. The one on the right, uh, I need a, an idea and we're going to look through these. So we've got one bottle opener, so a one bottle opener and two bottle stoppers and they're relatively close. So what I want, and, oh, and we have a honey dipper. So what I want you guys to do is, I've got all these gorgeous, gorgeous blanks here. I want you to tell me bottle stopper one, bottle stopper two, bottle opener, and honey dipper. List those four items out and tell me which of these pieces of wood would you pair with each, with each of them. What I've got here is this is a piece of Bacote that was sent to me a while back by Sam Hawthorne. It is gorgeous. I can cut it to any length and use it for any of those projects. This is a piece of uh, alligator juniper sent to me by Gene Banger and I can cut that to whatever length so it would make a nice handle or it would make a nice stopper. Here we have a piece of red uh, T-A-M-A-N-X. I don't know what that is from Gene Bangor. Uh, you could, I could use that for a handle. That would be a great handle for a honey dibber or a, a bottle opener. Or it, it could even be a, a great uh, bottle stopper. Got a gorgeous piece of mahogany that I bought in a four pack. A gorgeous piece of cherry, uh, and I purchased that in a four pack. Cherry always looks pretty when you turn it. I've got a piece of coca bolo here. Just look at that coca bolo uh, from Sam Hawthorne. Mark Tabaka sent me this uh, blank. This is a Spectraply blank. Looks like it's green, purple, and uh, natural wood color. I've got from Sam Hawthorne two pieces of rosewood. I've got a gorgeous piece from Sam Hawthorne. <laughs> Sam has was very good to me. He sent me a lot of wood. Um, this is a gorgeous piece of walnut and I had already drilled it for a bottle stopper, um, but I could still use it for one of these because the inserts are quite a bit bigger than that hole. I just never turned that one and I don't know why. I have a piece of olive wood here from Sam Hawthorne. That would make a beautiful handle. 
And I've got a blank here, and I'm gonna get this a little closer. This is a hybrid blank, and you can see it's got a little bit of clear resin, a little bit of dark resin. It's got a piece of wood in there. I could cut it maybe right down the middle and use uh, possibly this half, well, either half actually, um, but that would make a nice handle. I don't know if that's big enough around to make a bottle stopper. Um, this one probably is, but uh, if you want me to try, we can definitely try. But what I would like you guys to do is um, just kind of look over the wood and tell me which piece you like the best and which piece you would like to mate up to which of these components. There are a lot of choices there, I know. A lot of combinations. Uh, what I'm gonna do is exactly what I did before. We did one of these before where I turned um, a chaos blank and I'll let you guys pick the blank in the kit. Same scenario, you tell me the name of the blank you like and you tell me which component you want it associated with. There are four components. I will go ahead and tally them up on a note card over the next couple of weeks because I, I can be checking in periodically and I can get this stuff tallied up. And when I get back into the shop, by then, they'll be, the views will be through on that and I'll have all of the results tallied up and I'll know uh, which component to match with which blank based on uh, the request that you guys give me. And I'll share the, uh, the results with you like I did last time. I think it's kind of fun to do it that way. Uh, and then that way you guys kind of get to see what you want. So we got four potential projects here and we got a boatload of cool blanks. So let me know what your choice is and I will make you uh, a video with that blank and that component. Uh, and and it, 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 is, it is majority rule. And if we have a tiebreaker, I'll show you guys the video and say, hey, we got a tiebreaker, pick your favorite, and uh, we'll let everybody choose between the two or three that uh, tied up. So we'll, we'll make it fair and we'll have some fun with it. I, I, I like the interaction with you guys and it, it, it give me something to look forward to while I can't be in the shop. So vote now, vote often, vote early. <laughs> Actually just vote once. It gets kind of confusing if you vote a bunch of times. Um, all right, that's it for a little while. I'm going to uh, see what other kind, I'm gonna clean this up and see what other kind of trouble I can get into uh, today while I have just a few more minutes out here in the garage. I have been very busy. Um, since I'm gonna be away from the shop for about two weeks, I wanted to gather up some pin blanks for the blank in a bag drawing and some pin kits for the pin kit in a bag drawing. Now, I had already put a few together and I've got them in the house in a box, um, but I went ahead today and finished out gathering up everything I wanted to get together. I got the paper bags and I'm gonna go in the house later tonight and I'll build each of the bags. So when I get to the, um, the uh, Middle Ohio Valley Pin Turners gathering, basically, I'll be ready for the contest. I just will drop my bag of blanks in one tub and my bag of kits in the other tub and uh, keep my fingers crossed that they draw my ticket because that would be so cool to win like a tub full of blanks or a tub full of uh, pin kits. So I'm pretty psyched about that, but I'm ready there. Um, you know, I'm, ex I'm excited about you guys picking blanks and, 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 uh, and uh, the kits are the um, components. I am getting ready to go back and just kind of fiddle with this pin a little bit. I, I'm nervous about doing too much because I don't want it to be gummy and lock up, but I just want to make sure everything's going to work. So I'm going to kind of play with it a little bit and I probably will end up taking it back apart, but um, I, I, I'm just nosy like that. I got, I got to see if it's going to work. I'll let you guys know what happens. Guys, I'm doing pretty good. I went ahead and reassembled the blue pin, buffed it up. Uh, I know I said I was going to wait, but I just couldn't. I was getting ready to reassemble my son's pen and uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the house, cool off a little bit, cause man, it's hot out here. Look up the instructions. There's a PDF on the website for how to assemble that. And uh, then I'll come back out and get that one assembled and they'll both be done. And pretty much this is the end of it for me today uh, with the exception of the assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this video down, let you guys go. Have a great evening. I hope to see you again real, real soon. I'm gonna try to sneak a video or two in on this channel if I can, uh, but I should have a video Friday and I got another video with these pin repairs that I'll sneak in there somewhere. I don't know where I'll stick it in, just depends on timing. Thanks for hanging out with me. Have a great day and I'll see y'all again real soon.